Hello everyone. Um, welcome to the 11th tutorial of the Functional Data Structures course. Today we'll be uh, doing sheet number 11, which will have two exercises, one about heaps and the other one about queues. Um, and I'll also quickly review um, a homework uh, question from uh, the last homework that one of the students asked for on the piazza. So um, let me start with the heap question. So we want to define an insertion function for heaps that doesn't use merging, basically. So recall that um, recall the original the original insertion function for heaps that uses merging. Okay, I will just show you that function on uh, Isabel. So, so that is the merge function. Okay. So basically, as you can see, you have um, two heaps. So, for, so uh, f firstly, I will just do a very quick review. Though I assume that you've learned that from uh, in the lecture. So a heap is just a tree where um, with um, where where at every level in that tree, the um, the, va the, va the 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 value in the node is less than or equal to the level below it. But there is no relationship between um, the values in the nodes stored in the nodes on the same level. So, for example, here we can have one, three, two, five, six, eight, eleven. Okay, so this is a value here. So here. Only what, what you care about is that at the higher levels you have less values. Okay, so the insertion function. Um, okay, sorry. So that that's the first invariant. The second invariant is that so uh, it's, it's more specific to leftist heaps, which is the kind of heap that for which we which we want to insert uh, for which we want to implement an insertion function, and that is uh, it says that. Um, it's basically this invariant. Let me show it to you here. The heap invariant. So, so this is the invariant that I just described. So it's called the heap invariant that the values uh, are less at the higher levels. And the other invariant is a structural invariant. Um, so let me see if it's in this file. So anyway, it says that that the ranking of of the left of a left uh, sub sub heap is always greater or equal than the ranking of the right one. Um, yeah, that's it. So it's a, it's it basically is, is, is this is the structural invariant and it's called leftist tree. So the ranking of the um, of the left sub tree or sub heap is greater than or equal to the ranking of the right one. And the ranking uh, and the rank is. Um, is the length of the right spine. The ranking of a tree is the length of its right spine. So the ranking of this thing is just the length, is, is that. One, uh, two, three. So that's the, like, the ranking here. Okay? So anyway, so the merging function works as follows. So you have, um, so give it to some Isabel. So you get, you get two trees, L1 and L2. Uh, sorry, you, you get T1 and T2, and then you um, basically proceed on the spines of um, of either of, um, of either one of the trees, and merge. Mer uh, so 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 either you merge the right spine of the first tree and the and the left and left spine. So, as you can see on the left, um, here um, we basically are given two heaps. So let's say one tooth, we'll just use a smaller one. So one, two, and three. 
and the way you would uh, and another one for example four five and six and um, each of them has a ranking so uh, each of the nodes has a, a label with a ranking as well so this node is labeled with the ranking one and this one is labeled with the ranking one and this one is labeled with the ranking two because as I said the ranking is um, or as you can see there ranking so it is just um, basically the, the length of the right spine okay and similarly there okay and then the function merge would um, take those two these, those two heaps and then produce another a third heap that has all of the members and that heap should um, um, preserve the structural invariant and that is the ranking of the left subtree is greater than or equal to the ranking of the right one and the ordering or the heap uh, invariant which is that elements at the top have smaller nodes uh, nodes at the top are have smaller values stored to them okay so for instance here we would call heap uh, merge on this on those on those two so it would start like that and um, so we will be in the third case because we have we have um, two trees so, and, and, and and then you will compare the values over here and there you'll find that this one is less so you'll try to merge that with the right subtree of this and then um, the result of that merging you will see the ranking of it if it's greater than the ranking of the left sub sub heap or subtree then you would flip them and that this is this flipping is done with this function node here, okay? So I will show you the example better. Um, um, so here, when we uh, do the first calls, so it's one, two, and then this node will just be the, the result of merging. Um, Um, three and four, five, six, okay, and then this merging again will be in the third case because both trees are not empty. So, what that would result into, okay, again, this three is more than equal to four, so you will just merge this right subtree with the leaf. Okay, so this would um, and so, so merging this right, uh, this one with the leaf would give us would, would take us into the first case. So it will only result into that. Okay, into that subtree. Okay, so the merging of this leaf and that will just result into that. Okay, and then you would you would um, see if the ranking of that is greater than or equal to the ranking of that and whichever one has the rank greater ranking would be the left subtree the left subtree of the resulting um, of the result of the merge okay and of course this one has a greater uh, ranking so this would result into that heap okay and then this would be the return of merge so the resulting the final one the final uh, heap would be just two um, again two one uh, and then the result of that but then you will compare uh, sorry two and one and that and that subtree okay and then you will compare the ranking of this with that okay and then you will find that the ranking of this and that are equal so the resulting tree would be uh, the resulting heap or tree would be just that okay so three and then four five and six so that would be the resulting one so this is the way merging works so if you have looked into it um, 
more abstractly, so 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 the, so in order for us to solve this current the first exercise, which is the insertion, without merging, you need to firstly understand the intuition of this merging. So, and the intuition here is that we are treating the. Um, in either case, we're going to treat. We're going to try and um, merge the 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 one one heap with the right subtree of the other. Okay. So here the first case. So either you merge the the um, second tree, the right the, the second argument with the right subtree of the first one, or the other way around. Okay. And then you and then you flip using this function node. You keep flipping like that to, to maintain the structural invariant. So here, if you look into this, you could uh, you could actually see that we are what we are doing is basically um, merging this right spine with that right spine as if we're merging two lists. So remember, you know, you can just like remember the the um, the way you merge a list. So let's say like one you want to merge one three and four and six. So you will just start here and then you will take the smaller elements for example. So here you take one and then that will progress there. This arrow will be there and then you three would compare to four and then you would then take three and then four and six. So remember so so we're basically doing something similar like to this to the to, to, to merging lists when we're merging two heaps. So now we want to do the insertion. Okay, so again think about it as if we're doing an insertion just on the right spine. Um, without mer without merging. So how would you insert in a list? You would basically go over every member you would have so for example if I want to insert let me just draw this uh, write this list down. So if I want to insert three into this list, this sorted list, so um, one, two, six, seven, you would compare it. You compare three with every member element of the list, uh, starting with the one and then with the two, and then once the element is greater than three, you just put the three in the middle there, and then that would be the final list. So we want to do something like that, but for heaps. So. I, I suggest you just pause the video and do it yourself, but I will do it now. So, function leftist heap insert. So, you will the first. Let me just put the, put the types in. Okay. So you will uh, do it recursively on the heap. So if you're inserting and let you insert. In a leaf, uh, insert um, x in a leaf. That would should result just in um, um, yeah. But we need just the ranking label as well because the type heap is like, like that. So it would be one. Otherwise, you would insert this x, but in a heap that has a left and a right subtree, and a y, and some um, ranking, I'll just call it constant k. Okay? So you want, okay, so what we what I would do here is I would just um, do as I would do in the list. So you would compare x 
with y. Okay, so if x is less than or equal, it's less than or equal to y, then you would just keep everything as it is, but insert x into the right subtree. Finish that. Else. Okay. Okay. So you would insert x um, in the rest of tree. Okay. And you will need um, to um, compare, as I, as I was doing with the merging, compare the the ranking of this with the ranking of that. And then whichever one of them has a bigger ranking should be on the left. And then the way for us to do that is just using this function. Um, where is it? Node. That was used there. Okay, so this function does exactly that. Okay. So I'll just use it there. Okay, either this or. You will you will have to push the um, the y into further into the right subtree. Okay, that should do what we want. So um, let's try to prove some things about that function. Um, so let's say I want to prove that set from okay, I'll just copy that lemma. So we hope that it insert actually it does insert the element. Split the ifs. And see how the sub goals look like. So we have um, so let me just remove this. Three two um, in the set things. I'll declare the short names. Let's see how it looks like now. It looks better. So set three of node. We know that. Um, hmm. So if we insert x in T2, we know that the set um, This is the set insertion. So it's confusing. So this is the set insertion, and this is the tree insertion. Okay. So if we insert x in the on tree two t two, um, we want to say that 
if x is not in t1 and it's not in t2 and then it is in the set of nodes in produced by that insert in that tree then it is going to be certainly be the insert element x okay so firstly we want we know that we, we just want to make sure that the set of nodes in that in in this thing is either nodes in t1 or nodes of t2 or x basically that's what we want to say so we need to unfold the definition of node and then hopefully that unfolding will um, if we, if we unfold the definition of node, then we will get a few cases, but all of them will be uh, clear tree constructions, and then the definition of set tree will be unfolded on those tree constructions. So let me just do that. Okay. So now it's a bit um, clearer. All the cases were split. So now we. So basically, we're we were, we're saying if x a is in that. Thing. Uh, yeah, so if x a is in the set of nodes oh, resulting from inserting x to in t two and it's not in t two, then it is equal to x. Okay. And then here we have um, l h um, insert. So it's yeah. What is what? Where did we get this insertion from? We we're supposed to be just doing LH insert. Um, um, oh, here the definition. Okay, so this should have been this way. This should be a recursive call, not just an insertion. So now let's we'll see. So here we have um, so the setup. Yeah, why is that not working? So we have the set, the set of the insertion of x in T two equals that right hand side okay oh yeah but here we're inserting an arbitrary a which is different from x it's just is some something that is multiplicative or equal to x so we need to generalize so here we generalized okay two part so let me just show you why did we do that. Um, I mean, here we needed to generalize that because we wanted to rewrite that using the induction hypothesis. And the induction hypothesis is just not working because it assumes a specific x while we have here a different a. So we have to generalize this, this x in order for it to apply to the a, to the um, um, a. Okay, so that's one thing. Let's go to the next one. So here, we want to prove that if we're inserting in a heap, if we're inserting in a heap, then the resulting thing is also a heap. And what that means basically is this is just the ordering constraint, not the structural one. Ordering the invariant. So let's induction key and also okay let's just 
getting out of control. Uh, the names. So, um, you have this is a heap and that's a heap. Um, and we know that A is smaller than or equal to anything in the union of both. Um, and A is greater than X. I want to, okay, so let's just simplify the, that node definition. Was so now we have um okay so this is a heap this is a heap um Yeah, we just need to rewrite that because so we need to prove that x a is smaller than or equal. Uh, sorry, x a is smaller than or equal uh, is greater than or equal to a, and a is greater than x. Um, is greater than or equal to x. Hmm. Okay, I just need to split this into the separate several separate cases by rewriting with that because this will um, then give us two cases when x a is x and when x a is just another member of T two. So now we have um, which case is that? So x a is x here. Okay, so we want to say that if it's a heap and that's a heap. And a is smaller than or equal to any x in either one of the trees. Mm. Okay, so what do we know about a? Where does the a come from? A is just something that is greater than. Okay, so let me try and see try with that and see if it's provable in any way. If it doesn't work, then we need to uh, slowly analyze the sub goal. Okay, it's not working, so here. So x is less than equal. And A is smaller than anything in the tree. Yeah, there's a bug. Yeah, 
I mean, the reason there must be a bug is, is, is basically we don't have any assumptions on this A. This just seems like um, like some 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 constant that came out of the blue. So the bug here is that if basically we insert, so let's just use um, let's just constrain that to be a natural number left this heap so that the counterexample is more readable. So if we insert one in that, let's try and see what happens. to the left which is absolutely wrong so why is that so here we have um, yeah so the zero shouldn't be inserted as a child to the one because the one is just greater as simple as that so here we have if x is smaller than or equal to y then you insert ah yeah it should be the opposite it should be the other way around is greater than or equal to y, then yeah, should we find an example now? And now, yeah, we have a better. Um, where is a? So where does a come from? Okay, so now we we want to say that heap. Okay, so this is a heap, and this is just some random a and then we have an induction hypothesis that inserting anything into t2 is a heap oh sorry inserting x into t2 is a heap we want we want specifically a so that's arbitrary x so now yeah let's remove those the goals but we still so here we have we want so what is x? X is where does x come from? So okay, so here we're inserting x. No. Okay, a. We know that a is smaller than or equal to anything in the in both subtrees, and we know that x a is. an element of the left subtree okay and what is the really an x x is x is um, not greater than or equal to a so this means that x is strictly smaller than a so okay so x okay so let me just write that down so we have that X is strictly smaller than A, and we have for any n for any y in T1 or T2, we know that A is smaller than or equal to Y. Okay? And we know that X A is in T1. And what we want to prove is that X is smaller than or equal to X A. So we have X smaller strictly smaller than a and a strictly smaller than anything into other one of the two trees and um, yeah so this should hold as it is maybe it just needs a stronger reason or something stronger method let me just try that uh, suppose okay, you know there's a sledgehammer let's see no. Mm. Okay, so basically just want some 
lemma talks about elements uh, union uh, elements and unions maybe uh, quantifications of elements and unions let's see, let's see like it we basically want O2 to understand to somehow simplify that thing I just want to try to make sure that this will solve everything. Okay, so that actually does solve the problem. But let's just try and simplify that. Find theorems. Anything. Okay, so for all. exactly what we need there. So let's try that. Okay, so that I'm folding this into two things as we want it. Um, that yeah, it's little words. Yeah. Okay, so we can in fact just do that. That does it for that. So now let's um, prove the third property of, of that insertion function, which is that it preserves the structural invariant of the heap, of the leftist heap. So basically, it produces a leftist tree. So So that is the third one. Now let's start with um, a timing function. So in this case, what we're going to be measuring is, um, yeah, the time. And when, when we say we're going to measure the time without specifying, without, for example, saying, I want you to measure the number of comparisons, or I want you to measure the number of um, multiplications, etc. Then what that means, what that, um, what that means is that we want to we want to just measure the number of recursive calls. That usually is a very good indicator of how long a certain function takes. So we're going to just follow the same recursion, uh, recursive structure of the other of the insertion function. So here, that should be. Um, um, hmm. So, let me just do the time of that, of that recursive call. Then the same there. Okay. But, before that you will have to add a 1 to account for the current call. So every recursive call, um, yeah. You, you add a one at the beginning of the call, so you, then you have accounted to that for that recursive call. So now, um, yeah, let's prove the theorem of it. And, uh, 
that basically insertion is always linear in the ranking of the t and the reason that is is because we basically go on the right on the right um, spine and, and we do we do we keep recursively calling ourselves on the right spine um, so let us try and do the induction there again on t and see what happens here okay so again we need to generalize the x Yeah, that does that. So now we're done with this first exercise and let's start the uh, second one, which is basically, if we have um, um, an, original, an original implementation of queues, we want to basically augment, so, so, so we have, we have, in this case we have an original implementation, like an, we have an implementation of priority queues, okay, and that priority queues has a few operations, um, you know, like empties, empty, insert, and get min and delete min. And what we want to do is basically give, um, we want to implement another priority queue that has the same operations, but that has the get, get minimum or delete minimum in unit time, okay. Um, sorry, get minimum on, in unit time. So the way for us to do that is basically to augment, to, to create a new priority queue data type, uh, like um, the data structure and, and, and data type, and then augment it with the type of the minimum, and then redefine all the operations using the original operations. Okay. So here there will be a bit of um, copying and pasting. So let me do that. and it's, it's interface okay so here we're not saying what the data type is but as I said earlier we need to augment it somehow to make the get minimum a unit time operation so what is that data type, for instance? We'll just not say that now. Okay. So I'll just put the video here and then show you the. Um, you should do this manually yourself. So. Okay, so that is the interface, and now, let, before we do anything there, we just want to create a proper data type of, for, for this priority queue, and basically, so, um, okay, so we need, um, uh, firstly, let me just show you the, the the locale that we're using. So we have already an implementation or uh, an it, so basically an interface, not an implementation, this is an interface for uh, a priority queue, which is implemented as a locale. So here in this, in the what that means is that we have basi basically some um, named, uh, uh, named context called priority queue and that ha fixes all of these function names so empty is empty insert etc and has all of these assumptions about them okay 
So for example, that m set empty equals equals that equals the uh, equals the empty multi set. So multi set so m set applies to empty equals that and empty is the empty q. And for example, if if the structure invariant holds for q and it's empty, then uh, sorry, if, if the structure invariant holds for q, then this q is empty if and only if is the multi set in it is is empty. And other assumptions like that that basically are, that basically characterize the proper way of operation for all of these functions there. Okay. So basic. So so what we're saying here we're, we're instantiating a new priority q. It's called ds priority q, and that priority q has the same properties as the original one, as the original. Uh, so 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 what that means is that it is a priority q. Okay. So if you say equal priority queue that means it has all the assumptions of the priority queue for for those con for, for those fixed con constants that we're fixing here okay so origin empty etc all of these fixed constants and um, yeah and there is also the um, this function yeah all of them okay so I don't really know I don't think that we should have oh yeah we have the and here because and because this function or M set is of a different type than all of the other ones. Okay. So we we want to we want to base so we want to do another implementation of priority queues using the same functions of an origin of an existing implementation. But that implementation should have the property that I said, which is that delete minimum is linear, it takes span of you know, constant time. Okay. So basic so so the intuition behind that is that is that assuming that we have an implementation of priority queues, we want to use that implementation to make an even better implementation of priority queues, maybe by by augmenting the original priority queue with some data. Okay, so here we're going to so that so here we're going to augment the priority queue with uh, like we're going to implement uh, augment this type BSQ with. Um, with the minimum, okay. So it's either going to be an empty Q, or it will be um, a Q that um, that has. So sorry, it will be either um, or to, if it's not empty, it, it should be an, a heap that has a minimum element and um, and and all the other. Um, and the rest of a heap, okay? So let me just show you what that how that is implemented. Or heap or alpha s, okay? So those are the two uh, possibilities there. And now let's start with the implementation. So we're going to implement all of these functions again. We'll re-implement them for this BSQ. So we can we can assume that we have these functions there. With the with the with the runtime with the running times that, that are given in the question up there, okay. So let's start with uh, implementing an empty, okay. So definition um, empty. This is a predicate that says that the given Q is empty. Sorry, this is a this is a constant that gives you the empty Q, okay. So here, what we have there, this is a bit. So this empty is just an, a type of type Q. So this is also should be of, of our of our new type Q, which is VS <coughs> PQ. <coughs> so that should be um, just that. Okay. So this is these are all re-implementations, um, re and then we're going to show that these re-implementations. Satisfy the assumptions of, of, the, of the original locale of priority queue that we have. Okay, let me just finish the, the implementations first. So one now we want to prepare um, a predicate is empty that checks if a queue is empty. So it's it's boolean. So um, so is and let's call empty of MT equals true. Otherwise, 
it is false so if it's any heap that other than the, the empty heap then it should be false okay and then we were going to we were going to implement the insert again also um, so here we're going to um, to um, okay. Let me. I actually forgot to, to to say one thing that here when I when I'm talking about the, that type. I, so the alpha here is meant to be the minimum element. So we have an alpha heap. I mean that's basically that's the minimum element. And that's the that's the whole cube. That's the that is the actual cube. So you only have. You, this is just a data, this is basically a wrapper for the original one for the for for an, for a priority queue that has in addition to the priority queue which is that's just that uh, minimum element okay so here the insertion function would be also recursive again so if you're given an empty queue it should return um, a heap that has the element so insert an x and the empty queue but the, but not the current queue the empty unaugmented queue okay and for not for an empty queue so this would be a heap with a minimum element and a queue like that then in this case we should first of all well, we should return a heap but it should be uh, we should update the minimum augmented value and uh, then insert the value in the queue as well. So that minimum will be if x is strictly less than the minimum, then x plus m. Okay, and here will be the insertion, so we need to use the insertion that we have had originally to insert um, so it's x in q um, no. okay, so that is it and then we want to print to the cat min. This should be the easiest one because you just and that's that's basically the reason why we have this augmentation there. So get min it's only defined for uh an int heap. Okay. That's why it takes a unit time, and then delete min. So it will be only defined for the heap case as well. But then um, we will be doing two things. We'll firstly be um, updating the minimum. And then, um, and then, and also deleting the actual the minimum from the uh, L, from the tree, from the heap. Okay, so we have two things. So let's so firstly let's just um, yeah. So we have here. We need to we need to do two things. We need to uh, match two cases there. Because that Q, so here, that the Q could actually just be empty. So orange is empty, and Q. Then we don't um, do anything. We just return the empty else. What we would be doing here is. To return 
we update the minimum by getting the original minimum we will get min from the queue and we also delete the minimum from the queue okay so What else? So the reason we're implementing this like that, you just we we actually let me just go there because we need to make sure that it satisfies the assumptions on the min here. So it has satisfied that assumption. For example, the lead min has to satisfy and that assumption as well. So that assumption will be the second assumption will be satisfied because all that we're doing is just applying the original delete min. In the original delete min, we will be assuming that uh, we, we already are assuming that it satisfies that assumption, so we're not, we, we have no problem there. And also, we're having the. Um, we'll, it will also conform to that, assum to that assumption because. The original delete min conforms to that assumption. And the reason I say the original delete min conforms to any of these assumptions is that we're assuming here this where we're having this priority queue subloop uh, where we're uh, where, um, we're having this priority queue assumption there. Okay, so this is a locale that has some assumptions, and the main assumption is that um, priority queue holds the the um, the the assumption is that orish key and orish empty and all of these orish functions satisfy the assumption of priority queue. Okay, and then we want the new functions to also satisfy those assumptions. So then we can show that, given those original functions, we can implement a new one that also satisfies the assumptions. But it's done. It's running time for the delete of the unit. Okay, so now we want to just specify what is the invariant. So the new invariant is um, so firstly so invariant of empty so true and invariant for heap is that um, so it has to. Um, we we need the original the, the heap to satisfy the original invariant, and we need to make sure that the minimum is actually a minimum. Okay. So what I'll say is um, original invariant holds for Q. Okay, and anything call x and that x is in the original is in the q we have that means smaller than or equal to x oh yeah we don't have a set function but we have the function that gets uh, gives us the members of the q is this gives us a multi set so it's what it's called. It's called orish m set. So orish m set. Okay, and the membership operation for multi sets is just that. Oh. Okay, so. 
see any other parentheses there. Okay, so this is the invariant, the new invariant. And we just want a new function. Um, so what's next is to define a new function, um, you know, a new M set, and that will be it. Okay, so M set where M T equals that and M set for this should be just the original M set for the Q. Okay. And the minimum actually, yeah. So because we're not here we're not assuming that the minimum is in this queue. So we either assume that the minimum is in the queue, or we just say that it is the minimum um, like this is the, the original M set of the queue and the minimum with it. Okay, so now we this is a new M set. So you have either one of the two options, okay? And now so now let's prove that um that this um works that this that this all of these functions are a valid implementation of a priority queue and the way we do that is that we prove that they as, um satisfy the assumptions these assumptions okay for a new instantiation of priority queue okay so this so we say that this is a sub locale of a priority queue and where we just identify all the constants so I will go to the constants priority queue and copy and paste them so all I will do is just say this like repeat the names basically so where mt the mt of priority queue equals our mt our new mt and the same for the rest Then, so now, now what we have to do is prove the assumptions of the locale priority queue um, and then prove that they apply to these function multi to these new versions that we find there. Okay, so um, we in order for us to do that, we'll need the simple we will need to use basic we'll need to use the fact that the assumptions apply to these original functions. Okay, and when you're um, so here we're um, here we're saying that prior BS priority queue has the assumptions of priority key, has an in is, has an instance of is a, ha, um, has the assumptions satisfies the assumptions of priority queue. Sorry, we're saying that BS priority queue is parameterized over these new the, these original functions, and those functions satisfy the assumptions of priority queue. And the way for us to access any of these assumptions is by saying. Here we have orange. Orange is the name of basically the instance of priority queue that that these uh, functions satisfy. So we here I would say so to access any of these numbers, we say for example theorem orange. So let's say let's, what, what assumptions. So I'll just go there and get all the assumptions. Any of those assumptions. So let's 
C, so this is for example the assumption, that assumption, okay? So you can say orig dot any of the of these assumptions there, and then that that is uh, going to be a theorem of, that applies to the um, to the orig whatever constant. Rules. and then if we have all of these things the simples now we can use hopefully use them automatically so let's see what's wrong what's the warning there um we have right with um, something is repeated is it empty i think Okay. So now we need to show that this is a sublocale of. Uh, so we, now we need to show that the new that um, the new constants, the new functions that we have defined there up there, satisfy the, the assumptions of the priority queue. In other words, what we want to show is that we have came up with a new implementation of priority queues, okay? So let's do that. So unfold locales just says unfold the definition of that locale into the, pro into the assumptions of that locale, and now we have to prove them. Um, goal cases. So goal cases, when you say proof goal cases, it just, if you have uh, many sub goals like that, it, it, it divides each one of them into a, sub, a separate sub goal, and gives you an isr template and then you can click and then you, you have all each of the sub goals um, separately so you, we, here we had eight sub goals or however many they were and then we said proof goal cases and then each of them now is in its own separate isr block okay so this one is about um, empty so I'll just say that auto okay it didn't work so what is empty I think empty is something that we defined up there with a definition, yeah. So we need to unfold the definition. Okay, that's this one. Okay, it didn't work. Which one is that? This is invariant. So what is the invariant? Okay, so let's see. Apply auto and then it's empty. So this empty is that, so we need probably need some cases there. So here we need to just split cases of our queue because is empty is defined over cases. So cases queue auto. Okay. And what is this one about? So here we'll just say my auto and see what happens. Okay, again. Okay, that's not the right thing so in set. Okay, so we need to case it again.
that I copied all the theorems so I'm set empty it is empty and I'm set get min and I'm set delete min and I'm set insert and I'm set empty and in var empty any more insert, any more delete them, okay. So let's go and see what is done. Okay, so that's what that is. And the insertion there. Is this correct? this is incorrect because if we keep okay, so here we are um, here when we're inserting something we are assuming basically that it's from the queue like in the queue because and the semantics are different but then when we are uh, computing our M set we are adding the um, we're adding the this minimum to the multiset so let's just assume that the minimum is not in the queue so in this case what would we do so uh, x is so here we say that also the minimum is in the original one set okay so this here we're saying that in, the, in our invariant that the minimum is in the queue. Okay, so now and then we remove that. Let's see. Okay, so what value what else violates that? So delete minimum. Yeah. So this will also will, this this one, for example, assumes that we have the original that we, the the minimum is not in the queue. That's why we we're doing we're replacing it with original min. That's what I did there. So I will just fix everything to work. So I'll fix the insertion instead to to insert to basically what I'm what I will be doing is that. I'll keep the minimum outside of the queue by by basically if if I say x is if x is less than m then what we return is a heap okay whose minimum is x but whose uh, but 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 in which we insert the minimum otherwise we do the opposite. We keep the minimum as it is, and keep the minimum as it is, and then insert x. Okay. So this is, okay. So it works now. So you can you can try and do the other way around. I don't know. I don't remember if it will actually violate one of the assumptions of the priority queue. Look, look here. Look. If you can try the other implementation. Um, 
So here, command my O2 and seeing what happens. Doesn't work. Um, what do we have there? Just um, this assumption says that if you delete minimum from the queue, then the multi set of the new queue is the same but without the minimum. Okay, now what? Oh, um, first of all, what is the what is this um, delete minimum? Okay, so it's recursive like that, so we need to split cases. Okay, and see what happens. Okay, it works. And then now the next state, the next um, goal. And the auto, the auto. Yeah, I mean, okay, just do that. Uh, okay, this is bad. Okay, so let me just okay, well, you know. Ticket maybe. I think we made the bug there when I'm trying to internalize the proof state as much as possible. What is this insert? Okay, this is insertion in a set. Okay, let me just see if this is not. So get min equals the manual and set of the original of the center. Okay, and where's get min? 
No, let's get in. So why is this not um, valid? Okay, so I think I will just let me just go to the original server and understand. Okay, so minimum set it actually is defined in terms of set as the minimum of set of M set. So what would that mean for us? Okay, so I sh well, the invariant should be defined and everything should be defined in terms of um, set of M set, I think. That might help. Where's the invariant? Yeah. That's it. So X in set M set maybe like that. Let's see if that works. So now Okay, so this is just a bounded for all and it takes yeah, this is a for all that takes um, a multiset. So where is that coming from? So here we have minimum set, minimum set. So minimum set, okay, that's this and invariant. Hmm. Okay, so let's just slowly debug that. Okay, so for sub goal. Okay, and the second sub goal. So here, mm, okay, so here we have minimum of insert something, okay, so let's see what lemmas talk about that, minimum and insert. Search outside this. Okay, that's not possible because I think there are theorems about minimum insertion. Okay, so let's just say main main oh we need the set insert there I think okay so let's do again okay that's so okay so we will have that we need this one because we have that that assumption we have is satisfied because of our of the invariant which we unfold. So let's see. Yeah, that is it. Okay.
And we have another insert that's in the locale here. Okay. Again. Okay, what is this? In var. Empty definition. What is this one? Variant of Q. We basically need to replace that by saying that x x is in that thing and it's not equal to the minimum value okay so let us see Okay, let us see what lemmas are there for that purpose. So I'll just get out of this locale so that we can um, look for lemmas without having confused names from the thing from the insertions and deletions that we have defined in the locale. So we need now to find a lemma that has a minus. Okay, but that minus should be should be taking an alpha m set and another and returning an alpha m set. Seems like it's not called now. M set. Multi set. That's what it's called. Okay. 
Okay. So what kind of minus is that? Is this... Um, yeah, this is a, a multi-set minus. There's no way that, that this is the only theorem that talks about multi-set minuses. I'll just have that. Okay, I'll, yeah. And so we want basically something that is in that minus. Okay. So so here when you when you have um, an infix operator, you have to put it in between these parentheses when you're writing it by by itself. Um, so that's yeah. Maybe that's what we want. So basically, so this theorem says that it is in, if it's in the difference, then it is also in the um, original set, okay? And if it is in the original, like, like, like if, if it is in this set, yeah, if it is in this set, then the minimum of that set is less than it, okay? So we basically want to do that. Let's just do using this theorem. My force, yeah, good. Okay, but that's just unacceptably bad. Yeah. Okay, so now that ends this exercise. So now we have shown what we have shown is that each of those fun new functions that we have, we, are, we have defined satisfies the assumptions of priority Q, the locale priority Q, okay? All of these assumptions, that was quite cumbersome. Um, and um, sledgehammer sledge, sledge is not working because also the, the, the searching here is not working and I don't know why. It, it, it has to do with def, defining the, the fact that we define things with similar names in, into the locale, I think. Anyway, yeah, that's that's it for the exercise. Um, thank you very much, and I, yeah, if you have any questions, ask on the Piazza forum or by email. Thank you.